Hi everybody! Today I'm going to be taking you to my farm in Stardew Valley. My farm is called Foxglove Farm and I'm going to try to show it to you eventually in all four seasons. But we're going to start with winter and in the valley, it's very close to the Feast of the Winter Star. So I'm going to start by just showing you a typical day in Stardew Valley. And what I do here, and around my home. So, we'll begin. So, this is my room in Stardew Valley. It's a little cramped and crowded, um, but I wish I could build a bigger house to hold all of our stuff, um, but it's very cozy. You can see my children running around, and every day I start here um, by checking on my family, making sure that they're happy that everyone's healthy and all of that. And then I begin uh, the day of hard work. So, this is uh, my bedroom, the master bedroom really. And this is my child, uh, Nico. This is my daughter, Ever. And it's good to check on them every single morning. Here comes my husband, Elliot. Good morning. I made us a pot of coffee. It's very nice, Elliot. Um, and there's the coffee. Uh, oh, he's a little mad that I'm in his way. Every day I give him uh, his favorite gift, which is a pomegranate. And make sure that he's happy. And uh, he's pretty independent. This is his office. Or his space, I guess. He likes to read. He's a writer by trade. He likes nautical things. Here's a globe I bought for him. Um, and so, we built this wing for him when he moved into the house. Here are some of my favorite things. My big bear, my sitting room. Some of our shelves. And um, it's nice to give him a kiss every day, too. So, anyway, after I check on the family, uh, let me actually show you our home. So this is sort of the heart and hearth of our home. Uh, it's our kitchen and dining room. And we have a couple decorative flourishes right now for the holiday, as I mentioned. Now you can see our nice warm fire in our kitchen. And then if you go upstairs, here's kind of our family room where it's nice to sit and read. Try to make it cozy. And of course a room for the children. It's got some natural light and some stuffed animals. I guess Elliot is coming here to stand and stare at them. Which is a very important thing to do. But we're a little bit busier than Elliot today, so we're going to go ahead and take a look outside. We can see it's snowing out. The first thing we do, though, is want to check the mail. Um, hello. Sorry I'm not good at writing letters. I made one metal bar too many, and I thought you might need it. Clint, the blacksmith. Perfect. So we'll take that. Sometimes people send you presents. Tomorrow is the Feast of the Winter Star. Did you get a gift for your secret friend, Robin? The feast starts at 9 a.m. in the town square. See you then. Mara Lewis. Right, so I have to remember to bring a present to my secret friend, Robin. I'm going to bring her this orange wine here. She tends to like wine. Festivals are a big part of the valley. 
these statues here uh, provide iridium ore and uh, various extras every day. Uh, one of them, uh, this one here, costs a million G, so it's a little pricey. And uh, this one here, the purple one, uh, provides iridium ore every day. I don't really need that much iridium ore right now, but um, this one here, like I said, it does cost a lot. Uh, but uh, the second one, the purple one, has to be obtained through pleasing your uh, your grandfather, or the, uh, the spirit of your grandfather, I should say. I'm going to put some of these things in our shipping bin, because we don't really need them. And to be honest, I'm not worried about making a ton of money right now. Um, I am just kind of showing you around. And honestly, my farm is doing well. So this is Mr. Baby. He's my cat. And every day, it's good to visit this little space I made for Mr. Baby. Mr. Baby is a very important resident of the farm and a part of my family. So we give him water in his bowl just make sure that his overall area is nice and clean. It's all for Mr. Baby. You'll see these empty barrels during spring and summer. Uh, they bloom with beautiful blossoms, but not during the winter. So let's go into my goop now. Again, this yard here is for my animals, my goop animals. Here's my favorite scarecrow based off of Howl's Moving Castle. I love it. It's a little Easter egg. And, um, this whole area is for them. But when it's cold out, they stay inside. And you can see that right here is a, a nice little, um, uh, hatch for them to come out. But not today when it's snowing. So we're gonna go see everybody and pick up their eggs. Every day they bring eggs. You can see there's a nice heater here. That keeps them warm and cozy when it's cold. So I'm going to check on all of them. And they're all very sweet. That one's a duck. I have some chickens, a bunny, and um, they give me various products like eggs that I then turn into mayonnaise or cloth, like you can see. So we take the egg, put it in, and it becomes mayonnaise. So cool. So every day we want to check on that. This is a loom in case we get some shedding from the bunny. Everything's all very ethical here. And that can make cloth. This is Pastor, named after Pastor Maldonado, the driver. Um, all of the black hens are kind of evil. This is Davos, named after Davos Seaworth. He looks sad today, unfortunately. Yeah, it's not good. Um, this is Raikachik, named after Kimi Raikkonen. And this is another one of the evil ones. El Chapo, which, you know, because he's evil. And this is Little Evil, and he's very sweet. Um, but yes, they all have red eyes and black feathers and plumage. And they give me void eggs, see? Void eggs. A jet black egg with red flax. It's warm to the touch. Void egg. So yes, they're brought to me um, indirectly by a witch. So anyway, but they're still very sweet and I love them. And um, this is Jensen Bunny. I think he's so cute. He's named after Jensen Button. Valtteri, whose name is actually spelled wrong and I apologize. And again, that's just past her. So... Um, they're all very happy here, though, even though apparently one of them is sad today. They do get sad if they can't go outside, but they can't go outside because it's so cold. So, there's a silo. This is where we keep hay, and uh-oh, it looks like we need to get some more. Um, we have automatic feeders here at the farm, but we still have to stock the silo with hay, so this is going to be a priority for us. I'm gonna run and, um, let's see, hey, do we have, we'll, we'll look up here instead, and there's some, so I'm looking for, um, for some hay 
just any extra hay I might have around to make sure the animals have enough to eat for tomorrow. Yep, there we go. During the summer, you can plant grass here um, and then cut it down uh, for fodder, but it, you can't do that during the... Um, Okay, you can't do that during the, uh, the winter months, it won't grow. This is our cave of wonder. It's kind of secret, so maybe we'll come back to it, as we will to the greenhouse. Again, since it's snowy, there's only so much we can do in terms of productivity during the winter. Here is where I keep my cows and pigs. And, of course, we start by saying hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. And then we're going to take out our milk pail. They also have a heater. But we're just going to milk uh, the cows. This is Geralt of Rivia. He's a truffle pig. So, when it's nice out, he goes and looks for truffles. Raleigh is named after Roland from the Dark Tower. And my pig here is named Pancake. His parent is Waffles, and that's just because I like waffles. Really like waffles, they're delicious. And here is the proud waffles in the flesh. <laughs> and then Toto, named after Toto Wolf. And Toto is going to give us some milk. See? Large milk, which is great. We're going to turn that into some wonderful cheese to sell. So, anyhow, that's, those are the very important tasks right now in winter that we, we do every day. It's essential to take care of the animals. Now you can peek into the greenhouse here. My greenhouse is not really optimized. I'm just going to start collecting some of the fruits and things we grow year-round here. Uh, like I said, my farm is doing pretty okay when it comes to money, and I'm actually at the point where I'm just kind of uh, happy to live the farm life, not chasing after tons and tons of money, so um, I know I'm sure you guys all have tips on how to make things much, much more profitable around here, uh, but that's not really what we're doing right now. We're just enjoying life, not too much, not too much stress. Anyhow, in the greenhouse, I grow lots of things. I'm going to turn a bunch of this fruit into preserves, wine, and jams and jellies. And they'll come up here. Now, the pomegranates, of course, I grow for my husband, who loves pomegranates and duck feathers so, so much. So I make sure we have them year-round for him. Uh-oh. You can see some of my fences are starting to deteriorate. Now, it's getting late, so we're going to go again to the shipping bin, and we're going to put in the pepper, the corn, strawberry, ancient fruits, corn again, ancient fruit, peaches and strawberries, mayonnaise, and cloth. And the rest we're going to hold on to for now. Um, now, at night, uh, the farm is lovely with the lighting, and I'll show you a little bit of the rest of the farm we didn't see during the day. This is our small pond, and our crystal path leading to both the ponds. Um, this is our area for Nikki Lauda. Nikki Lauda is my horse, and unfortunately, it's a little late to be taking him out because it's dark, but We'll see more of him later. Now, we're going to go over here. And again, this is our pond. Now, this crystal path here, which is more colorful than uh, the rest of the paths on the farm, uh, leads to, uh, connects our main bodies of water. Uh, we don't have fish that spawn in these ponds. Uh, mostly just junk, but... Um, they're still lovely to look at. Now, this is something I'm working on for my husband. It's our pomegranate grove. You can see he 
you know, he loves the pomegranates. And so these are all pomegranate trees here. And they don't um, bloom at this time of year. Um, but I'm hoping that when they do, he'll be really happy. Like I said, he's a writer. He's thoughtful and he loves nature. So I wanted to make something just for him. Somewhere he can contemplate. This is our uh, walk of cherry trees that I just passed, but um, we'll take a look at that again in daylight. All right, so as it's starting to get pretty late, we're gonna jump into bed and see that Elliot's already there. So let's go to sleep for the night. And then, well, look at that. There goes Santa Claus. Oh boy. <laughs> okay, so you can see we didn't make a ton. 86,000 G or so. But we also didn't work very hard, did we? <laughs> okay, so. Just like yesterday, we're gonna start the day uh, by finding the children and just saying good morning. So important. I don't see my husband, so there he is. Got up early and fed all the farm animals. I hope that makes your job easier. Um, there's Elliot. He kind of He's not really physically my type. He looks a little like Prince Adam from Beauty and the Beast, but he loves me a lot and I love him. He loves the gift. Of course he does. He always does. Um, I chose him because he's a little bit more grown up than some of the others. Um, although I did consider a lot of the other candidates, the marriage candidates, which I'll talk about at another time. I'll tell you about that. This is the shipping bin. Like I said, you put stuff in and you get money. So, oh no. Okay. So Mr. Baby is probably in. Oh, there he is. Hi, Mr. Baby. Always, always greet Mr. Baby. Now I'm going to go ahead and knock these down. I actually think you don't necessarily have to, um, to knock them down. You can just repair them, but I kind of like knocking them down. So the fences, uh, don't last forever, but I think I need to repair the stone fences maybe once a year or so, so it's not that bad. It can be annoying. Oh good, everyone seems quite happy today. Good. All right. Nope, nope. And we're gonna collect yesterday's mayonnaise, and then put in eggs for today. All right. And then we're going to go right to uh, say hello to Nikki Lauda the horse, so you can see him in the light. He's a wonderful horse. You can kind of take him all around, too. He's a very efficient mode of transportation. This is our well, which I think is really cute. Um, I tried to make the well the center of the, of the farm, so. Okay, so let's get our milk pail. And we're gonna first greet our cow and milk our cow, okay? Greet our cow and milk our cow. Make sure. Sometimes you have to try a couple times, um, because you really have to position right. And then we're gonna say hi to our pigs. Oh, the feast of the winter star has begun. So we better hurry. Okay, so we're gonna get cheese, put in more milk to make more cheese, and probably get going. All right, so I'll really sh uh, quickly show you our orange grove. We don't grow oranges in the winter, obviously, but um, they will bloom come summertime. So now we're gonna head to the feast of the winter star. So that shows that it's a festival day. Um, the confetti. Hi, Pam. It's awful cold. Pam likes to drink. Everybody. Oh, if you um, if you see worms like this, you can uh, dig and find things in the ground. So here we are, the feast of the winter star. It's good to talk to everybody in town at um, festivals, but. I'm just going to briefly show you around today. 
you might want to go to this festival yourself one day. So I don't want to ruin all the surprises. Um, there's Penny. I, I really like Penny. Do you wish to hear the legend of the winter star? Sure. Okay. In the night sky of winter, there is a bright star only visible from this valley. No one knows why this is, but in times of old, people would come from far and wide to see it. They believed that anyone who laid eyes on the winter star would be blessed with good fortune. Some even claim that the mysterious fruit known as the star drop is connected to the winter star in some way. Thank you, Willie. That's very nice. Here's Marlin. I like Marlin. So here's, um, oh, let's give uh, Robin her secret gift. Remember, we're giving her orange wine. Okay. Oh, so it's you. There's Robin. She's sweet. Thanks. That's good. Glad she liked it. Okay. Now I'm enjoying the festivities. Oh, what's this? Oh, my goodness. It's a present for me. Oh, boy. And it looks like it's from Vincent, who's little. I have a gift for you. I found it last summer when I was playing on the beach. Okay? It's... Clay! Wow! Great! That is the best! Aw, oh, thanks, Vincent. <laughs> for any of you wondering, um, I go by Spring quite a bit, but my name is Nicole. Um, so, yeah. Um, let's just talk to everyone. But see, they... Oh! What do I want? Usually I want a pair of stylish boots, but how about we say this year a jug of spiced mead? That sounds nice. Yep. Emily is a fan favorite. She's cute. Oh, here's George. A feast for some stupid star humbug. That's George. He's our resident uh, Scrooge, I guess. <laughs> anyway, if you see them calling me Nicole, um, Usually, I actually do go by spring and playthroughs, but uh, I named my character Nicole this time. So, here is Elliot. You don't need to give me anything. You've already given me the greatest gift. That's sweet. But you also said the same thing to me last year, so. Oh, Shane is one of my favorite. Um, he's a skeptic. <laughs> I really like Shane. Um, Caroline is drunk. Pierre is my least favorite person. Just obsessed with money, that Pierre. Um, Abigail's sweet. Kind of immature, though. Anyway, I chose Elliot because even though there is a lot of great people in town, uh, I like Sebastian. He's kind of fun. Uh, Elliot was sort of the, seemed like the most grown up to me. So, I also really liked Harvey, uh, the, the doctor. At first, I thought maybe I'd marry him. But, um, oh, Linus is great. Hi, Linus. Oh, Linus is, um, homeless outside of town. Uh, well, transient. I don't know. He lives in a nice tent, I think. Um, but he doesn't always get along with everyone. It's so beautiful at the festival, as you can see. But I'm gonna head out, because I've got stuff to do. So, okay. Many festivals have, like, games and shops and things like that, but getting late though. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that I put anything. Okay. Uh, yep. Even the clay. <laughs> Things I don't really need I'm going to sell. So don't tell them. Don't tell them that I sold the clay though. It was a nice gift from Vincent. Mr. Baby's asleep and so is Elliot. So I'm going to go to bed again. you can kind of see what I've earned today, which again is very, very little. But I was at a party all day. So, yeah, so I just, I chose Elliot because he, um, he's, he's kind and he's thoughtful. He's a little pretentious, but he can be funny. And Harvey the doctor turns out to be just a little, I don't know, a little lackluster. It's, it's quite hard to get to know him. He, he's super sweet and we went on this really nice hot air balloon date once, but he's just obsessed with being a doctor. And that's kind of all he ever, ever talks about. So, anyway, Elliot and I are quite happy. See? 
13 out of 12. That's good. Because <laughs> I give them lots of pomegranates. Everybody has different favorite things. Like Pam, who sent me a message and a beer because she loves beer. Um, this, uh, the statue, the first one I told you about, the one I paid a million G for, the gold one, it just gave me an emerald. And when it does that, when it gives you something strange and specific, it's usually because, if we look at the calendar, it's someone's birthday. Today it's Clint's birthday, the blacksmith, which is great. And so, emerald must be his favorite thing. The statue will give you someone's favorite thing. You can see it again. If it's their birthday, oh, we have to deal with these walls. Hello, Mr. Baby. Always say hello to Mr. Baby. Otherwise, it's just going to be a bad day. Okay. There are things you can actually do to decide. Um, I'm just going to repair this wall real quick. There are things you can do to see if it's going to be a good day or not. Um, if your luck is up by watching TV. But uh, again, I'm kind of past the point of really trying to <laughs> accomplish a whole lot. I've really um, done most of the things I want to do with my farm and, and the community. So I don't watch the TV every day, um, but if you do watch TV in the mornings in your house, you can find out if it's going to be a lucky day uh, or an unlucky day for you. So, um, anyhow. Okay, picking up our eggs, saying hi to the little guys. Hello, Jensen Bunny. Um, so anyhow, yeah, on people's birthdays, though, uh, if you bring them things they really love, um, which I'm gonna just, nah, I'm gonna do a little rearranging here to, um, just to make it easier. Yep. Uh, so anyway, if you bring people the things they love on their birthdays, well, that's not good. Then, um, they'll really love you more and you'll get closer to them as, uh, as people. And actually, Clint, whose birthday it is today, uh, is not at a 10 out of 10 with me. Once you're at a 10 out of 10 with someone, um, it stays that way and you don't really have to, uh, keep sort of courting them for their friendship. So I'm glad it's Clint's birthday and I can bring him his favorite thing, which is an emerald, so. Okay, milk. And, oops, see, you have to kind of get it right there. I don't know if you've ever milked a cow before. Uh, I have milked a goat um, in my life outside of Stardew Valley, I should say. Um, and uh, milking a goat is um, a kind of fun. <laughs> I, I don't know. So, yeah, kind of meditative. Okay. Uh, oh, and I should say you can buy goats in this game. I just don't, I don't have any right now. So, this is my orange grove again. Uh, this is my little museum of scarecrows, or rare crows, as they call them in Stardew Valley. So you can kind of see there's different seasonal and holiday themed rare crows. And uh, my garden is guarded by these little sculptures. This is a shrine to my grandfather. This shrine, Grandpa's shrine. And you can see, um, during the summer, we like to, uh, we like to, oh, gotta keep it clean. During the summer, flowers bloom around it. It's really lovely, so. Okay, so we're going back in the greenhouse. And, um, yeah. Just picking some crops. The, uh, the best things to raise if you really want to make a good amount of money are um, ancient fruits, really. Uh, they're very profitable. But I like anything that grows uh, over and over, like um, like corn and hot pepper. They will just keep growing so you don't have to replant. So eventually I'll probably just cut down everything else and only have the ancient fruit in here because it's just um, a lucrative crop. I'll show you something cool. If you take a crop and you put it in the scene maker, 
um, then it'll bring you seeds and you can plant those too. So this is a really great thing to do. This is an iridium sprinkler, um, and it's really the best sprinkler. Again, I could just put all iridium sprinklers in here and uh, maximize it, but the garden in here is just sort of a hobby. I know I keep saying this, like, um, <laughs> and you might wonder, where do you actually make your money, farmer? But for now, I'm just gonna plant a couple of those. Okay, there we go. So, now back out into the snow. Now, you're thinking, okay, that's, that's a nice amount of money, right? Um, but is it really sustainable? So let's go into our cave of wonder. All right, so this is uh, according to a, a, uh, official legend, a cave only for bats, for fruit bats. Um, and that's why I have this cave. But I've secretly placed all those machines in it. And you may wonder, what do those machines actually do? Um, I'm just gonna run around and check on the hay real quick. Okay, so those machines produce diamonds. I know it sounds crazy, but we have the technology. We synthesize diamonds and sell them on, I don't know if it's the black market or if it's actually totally legit. I like to pretend it's not though. And it's like my little, um, breaking bad cave or something like that. Um, anyway, um, You'll see them at some point. Diamonds are worth a lot, and producing diamonds is lucrative business, so. But we're gonna go for a little ride now, because we need to take care of this fodder issue. So, Nikki Lauda is very fast, and he is going to take me here to see my friend Marnie, and look at some supplies. And I'm gonna get a bunch of hay, um, because I need to feed my animals through the winter, which is almost over. There's only a couple days. You can see she has her own cows. Only a couple days of winter left, but we want to make sure we eat okay. Sam's trying to do a kickflip. Shane's walking around, and... Oh, actually, I don't like that little shrub. It's the only thing that gets in my way. Um, so... We're gonna go and see Clint now, because it's his birthday, so Clint uh, lives here, uh, but he does not appear to be home. We're gonna have to find him. So we're gonna re get back on our horse. Now I'm not as close of friends with Clint, so... I'm not totally sure. Oh, here's the kids, though. Hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm also not at t a level 10 with my kid or with the children here, so I need to, um, I need to say hi to them. Just talking to people will make them like you a little bit. Uh, you can talk to people about twi usually twice, uh, twice in a row each day. While I look for Clint, I'm going to just check out the beach, which is also covered in snow. But look, there's a lot of great things to dig up. The beach is also a great place to go foraging. Here's a nautilus shell. So, so great. And an oyster. The nautilus shell is a really cool thing to find. It's more rare. You can also set up crab pots. Um, and the crab pots are there uh, so that you can catch things like crabs and lobsters. There are take that clam, and, uh, yeah, if you fix this little bridge early on in, in your time here in Stardew Valley, you have access to this tide pool, which is so great, because the coral, the sea urchins, and the things that you can find here in the tide pools are worth a pretty penny if you ship them home, or if you ship them at home, or sell them, uh, on the pier, so... Just to show you, this is where my husband, Elliot, used to live. Some humble. He loves his piano. I 
keep trying to find a way to bring a piano to our house, but I can't figure it out how. This rose here, um, I, I sometimes wonder if it's not a nod to Beauty and the Beast, just because he looks so much like Prince Adam from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I love Beast, but Prince Adam's not really my type. <laughs> okay, so there we go. It's getting a little darker, so I'm wondering if we can find Clint the blacksmith at the bar. He really likes to go to the saloon, so. Oh, yep, here he is. The Star Drop Saloon. My instinct was right. So, let's get that emerald in our hands um, and take it to him. Happy birthday. You remember my birthday. I'm impressed. Thanks. Oh, good. Now we're 10 out of 10. That's great. So, um, oh, I have this beer. So, I'll give this beer to Willie. I'm also not 10 out of 10 with Willie yet, but I really like him. So, um, but I think I'm 10 out of 10 with everyone else here in town. Um, Shane was the first person I was 10 out of 10 with. He can be really surly. But he's sweet deep down, so... Okay. So we're gonna go back home, because it's getting late. And it's snowy. Um, I'll talk more about the social element at some point. Uh, but basically, yeah. If you talk to people, if you run errands for people, if you bring presents... Oops. And especially if you remember their birthdays, they'll really um, take a liking to you. And... Um, which is true in real life, too. Although, you shouldn't shower people with weird gifts in real life. Uh, however, getting to know them well enough... Oh, gotta fix this. Getting to know people well enough to know what they really love. And then remembering their birthdays and things. Well, those are great life skills, right? So. Okay. I know it seems like I do a lot of um, rebuilding of my fences. But again, it's just because they deteriorate somewhat randomly throughout the year, so you're not always rebuilding them. You can also build sturdier iron fences, but uh, let's just check on everybody. Put the hay away. Oh, they're trying to sleep, so. Um, Aunt Jensen Bunny is trying to sleep. <laughs> He's so cute. I kind of wish I just had a farm full of bunnies. Maybe eventually I'll transition to that. Anyhow. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that we ship um, everything else. A lot of the stuff we found at the beach today. You'll see I hold on to certain things that I might use, like rocks, stones, to build those stone fences. Hi, Mr. Baby. From the brightest winter star to the fragrant fairy rose, nothing can compare with your captivating beauty. That's nice, Elliot. That gets a kiss. Okay. <laughs> so, Elliot's sweet. And we sleep for the night. Um, so yeah, you start to see that uh, there's a lot of different things. We had a decent day, bringing in 10,000. Okay. So we're getting up for another day in Stardew Valley. And, um, alright. I'm gonna go check out my calendar and you can see uh, that the month is almost over, so, um, alright. Elliot's gonna do some writing today. Will you be okay without my help? And, like I said, yeah, um, you can build iron fences. These are, these last the longest, but I like the way the stone fences look, so I keep stones with me so I can quickly build. And you just do that through the menu at as you see me doing. Good morning to my children. You can also redecorate your home. Uh, sometimes Elliot, when he first moved in, started doing a lot of that for me. Really glad you become part of our community. I've enclosed a 500 check for the Stardew Valley Agricultural Fund to help you continue your good work. That's nice from um, Mayor Lewis. Mr. Lewis is the mayor. So, okay. So that's nice. So sometimes you get money. Um, today I got an iridium bar, which I don't really need, and an iridium ore. So yeah, I have lots of iridium. I could have everything made of iridium if I wanted, but I don't, so. Uh, 
today we're gonna go and check out my cave of wonders because it's what I like to call payday. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> so, um, payday is, you see I get these diamonds and, uh, yes, the diamonds are worth a lot. And I don't really have to do much, just let them synthesize. So, uh, don't tell anybody because I'm not sure that I pay the proper taxes on all these diamonds, but uh, we do uh, supply the valley with most of its best gems uh, with all of these machines. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, if you wonder what the ones in the back here do, I'll show you. They make these, um, these are furnaces for making um, bars of gold, iridium, iron. So I just put some of that iridium ore in there just so you can kind of see the process. Once you make it into ore, you can build things like these machines. Um, I think these machines are, uh, made of batteries and gold and iridium. I don't know. But anyway, you can always make ore are into actually usable bars of different metals. You can use those to upgrade your tools, to build things, enhance things, all kinds of things, or you can just sell them. So, let's see our babies. Uh, I call all my animals babies. And they are getting ready for um, the warmer season. I'm sure they're excited about it. So we're just going to go and get our milk. There we go. And I'm gonna make cheese, okay? Pretty routine in here. Alright. And to just kind of show you the rest of the farm, this is a mushroom forest. A virgin egg mushroom forest, really, because I think we only have about eight or nine giant mushrooms that grow here uh, in the other seasons. They don't grow in the winter, unfortunately. Uh, this is our slime hutch and art walk. Uh, it's where we put kind of some of our stranger findings, uh, like our baby slime here. Now, you can take a watering can and provide water for the slimes. You can see he's still attacking me because he is a monster at the end of the day. Anyway, if you like, you can raise and rear slime uh, and make slime eggs from their leavings, but I haven't really gotten into that industry yet, so I'm, I'm waiting. Maybe in another season we'll look at slime, uh, slime rearing and slime, slime husbandry. Um, but yes, I'm not a, an expert. <laughs> 20 diamonds, milk, a wild plum that my fruit bats brought, cheese, okay. So anyhow, you get a sense of what we do. Uh, in the shadows, I should say. We're gonna just fix this fence. See, so you go here and just craft. That menu will show you um, what you can craft based on what you have in your rucksack. So, my rucksack, I like to keep things like coal and stone in it. Um, you can see that uh, I'm working on, you know, building uh, this space so that it's nice and pleasant for visitors. Again, since most of our business is sort of done in secret in the cave, I really want the rest of the farm to just be a beautiful place, a little Edenic retreat for people to come in and enjoy. Here, uh, you can see I want to craft some stepping stone paths. Uh, and I have stone there, so I'll show you. You just click and it's that easy to craft things, which is really nice. Um, I'm trying to decide how I kind of want this stone path because I built a walk of cherry trees a long time ago, a couple years ago in game time. And I really wanted this beautiful cherry tree walk um, for Sakura season. However, I, I built it rather close together and so you couldn't really see between the trees and really enjoy them. So I cut down half of the cherry trees on the left side. Some are still growing back. 
And now I'm just gonna kind of reformat where the pathway is because I want this to be a beautiful place come spring. And you'll see that um, when the season changes. So I'm just tearing up part of the cobblestone or the pebble path, I mean. The stepping stone path, I guess it's called. And that way, um, now we have this like really lovely little path. This tree here still isn't in full bloom. Sometimes they take a while, and if anything gets directly in their vicinity, they won't really grow. So you have to, you have to kind of keep a, keep an eye on it. So, anyhow, I'm really hoping um, that you've enjoyed seeing a little bit of what life is like here during the winter at Foxglove Farm, and we will be back soon uh, with a tour of the farm in. Um, in springtime. So I hope you'll really enjoy it and um, you can see we made a lot more money today. Um, and there's a beautiful moon wishing you a good night and happy travels. And I hope you'll join us for our exploration of the farm in springtime. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>